you know, we've been doing all the fun stuff. We've been doing the retrieving. We got the nose work in. We even talked about some of the feel throughout this DVD on how that antler is going to feel in the dog's mouth. The important part about this is that I think is oftentimes overlooked. It's a step that has to happen with every retriever. It's a huge step. It's a step that I don't like. I've skipped over it in the past. I've done everything I can to avoid it. And I, it always comes back to haunt me. And it will you too, I promise you that. What, it's hold conditioning that fixes a lot of the problems that I'm gonna talk about. If you've got a dog that drops, picks it up and drops it, picks it up and drops it, picks it up and drops it. You got a dog that blinks on a bumper or an antler or a dummy, goes out to it like it's gonna pick it up, smells it, picks bed up, moves on. If you've got a dog that runs victory laps, we've all seen this, where the dog gets it, wants to show it off to you and the whole neighborhood. Big victory laps. If you've got dogs that pick stuff up and run off with it in their mouth, all of those problems are fixed by a process that we call hold conditioning. Now, hold conditioning is not to be confused with force fetch. I hear force fetch, force fetch, force fetch. The fancy way of, or the nice way, the politically correct way of calling force fetch now I hear is trained retrieves. It, whatever you call it, the bottom line is your connect, that process connects negative to the retrieve. Here's my, it, it, you know by now, I'm not a treat trainer, but I'm very, very driven by positive reinforcement. I think these dogs are wired to want to make us happy. They want to please us. They want to do the right thing. And as long as I'm able to set them up to do the right thing, they'll do it. I promise you that. Now, hold conditioning eliminates the idea of force. I'm not big on connecting negatives to things that I want my dog to like. The retrieve is something that's a big reward to my dog. I want them to like it. I don't want to connect pain or pressure or negative or force to that. Instead, my dog is called a Labrador Retriever, Golden Retriever. You name it, all these re breeds, there's a category at Westminster called the Retrievers. They're born to retrieve. They've been bred to retrieve for hundreds of years. It's my job and your job as a trainer to just bring it out of them naturally. So hold conditioning allows us to do that without a lot of force. Now, I want these dogs delivering to hand, and you'll notice throughout the DVD, when I've got young pups, I'm really encouraging them, hold it, hold it, hold it. Don't be in a hurry to take it away from them, share it with them. Those dogs haven't been through the whole conditioning process, but the older dogs that are delivering and have a nice delivery to me, hold is what got them there. Now, we want them delivering antlers, we want them delivering bumpers, we're gonna use all these through it, but here's where it all starts out. It's gonna start out with the wooden dowel, and I'm gonna show you the steps. I'm gonna walk you through those steps. I'm gonna take several dogs, that are through the pro going through the process of hold conditioning right now, one that's just starting, a couple that are in the middle, and a few that are finished out, and show you the best I can in a condensed version of what hold conditioning is. Gotta remember, hold conditioning is a process that takes a while. I tell people six weeks, because you might get it done in four and then I look like a hero. If I tell you six and it takes seven, everyone's upset. Time doesn't matter. We need to get through this from start to finish with no holes in the middle. And if you do that and you get through hold conditioning, the, the amount of progress that you will be able to make with a retriever is amazing. So hold conditioning is what we're gonna get into and I'm gonna walk you through the steps. The process of hold conditioning really requires the right setup. Now, I'm not fancy about my setups. I've used tailgates on trucks. I've got, a lot of people have seen it on our Facebook page where I use a freezer at my house with a flight of stairs that goes up and I tack nails to it to adjust the heights with different sized dogs up and down the stringer at the bottom of the stairs. So, I don't think it has to be fancy. Here today what we're using is we're using an old spindle up against an old barn beam or barn pole that I'm gonna have the adjustable height. I've, put, I've measured this out already. I've got spry with me. Now, I do have to explain. Spry's not been through hold conditioning before. She's a little early. She's at six months old right now, just over six months old, and she's a little early. She's not quite done teething, but a lot like we did earlier, we showed that we made some retrieves with her to show the idea of these young dogs making retrieves. Again, I wouldn't do this while she's teething normally, but for this, I'm gonna show it to you. So it's a perfect example of the very first time she's been up on a table, a training table, to go through this process. Why do we put them on a table? I wanna get their feet out from under them. I wanna get them up where their focus will be a little better on me and take a little of their confidence away. A dog on the ground is a lot more confident than a dog elevated up on the table. So. I get better eye contact. I get her to focus a little better. Now, you can see she's settling in pretty quickly. Sometimes this takes a couple days. This is the first couple days of hold conditioning. I don't ever use any objects. I just get the dogs up on the table. Now, I've already figured out the height of this. So when I take this, I just put a nail in here, bent it up, and I'm putting it in. Now, 
the point of tying this off this way, tethering it off, is so that she can't duck out of it. A lot of dogs, their defense mechanism is they'll just duck out. So they want to give up, they want to get out of it, they duck. So she can't do it. Right now, she's just figuring out where she is up on this table. Now, another thing I've done is a flat collar. We don't want to use slips. Now, you see that slipped off, so I'm just going to bend this up a little bit. Flat nylon collar. That's what we've got for Spry here. There's no cinching. I don't want pressure to it, but what I want them to understand is if they lean out too far, there will be pressure. The most comfortable position for her is right there. So she's found it. Now remember, back up to the foundation stuff. The heel, the tying out, we talk about that in great depth in the foundation DVD. It's key, we have to have it. This is where this pays off as well. She already knows. If she puts pressure on her neck, the best way to turn it off is to come back to wherever the source is. So if it's me on heel, she's stepping back. If it's that stake in the ground that she's tied out to, she gets closer to it, it turns the pressure off. Well today, here's the point of pressure. So the best way for her to turn that pressure off that's uncomfortable is to just get back closer to it. She's gonna realize she can only put her head down so far. When the dogs fuss and their feet are anxious, I just let them figure this out themselves. So step one, get your dog comfortable on the elevated platform because what you're gonna do to them to start out, they're not gonna like. We're gonna use that old wooden dowel that I showed when we introed this. We're gonna put that in. The reason I use a wooden dowel, she's not gonna like this. I don't want her associating negative pressure or negative introductions to canvas bumpers. I don't want her introducing negative to training dummies. I don't want to introduce her negative to antlers. So we're not gonna start out with this stuff. We're gonna finish with it once she's comfortable. What I will start out with is the wooden dowel because I really don't care if she doesn't like broom handles. Here's another thing. I've had people send me messages and ask, do you sell those wooden dowels? You don't need to get that fancy. This is an old shovel handle. When I, get, when I break a shovel off, I cut the handles down into training dowels. So you can use any type of wooden dowel. You can see this one's been used. There's some chewing marks on it because I got some dogs that will chomp. So I got to work through that. But this is what I start out a lot of dogs with hold conditioning in. It's real easy. I slip it in my back pocket, out of sight, out of mind. So I'm waiting for her to settle. This is a time thing. So as, if, as these things get long, it's because we can't rush it. We can't speed up dog training. So she settled really nicely right now. I'd give her a little bit of praise for this. Good, good. Keep her settled. Now, as the dogs settle in, like I said, she's a, prime, she's a prime example of certain things she accelerates through pretty quickly. She's settling in nicely. What I want to do is get her to settle in, and then I'm going to introduce the dowel. This process, again, she's teething. I normally wouldn't do it. I'm going to just to show you, but they typically will fight it. They're typically going to want to duck out. They don't want this in their mouth. And we have to get this in their mouth where the dogs accept it, I get them to hold just for a second, and then I take them out. And my command is dead. You can use whatever you want. Some people say drop, dead. What I say dead, and I say it consistently. Repetition and consistency forms habits. De hold, 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 hold. That's going to be the command to hold. We've, you've already seen me start this out with those early retrieves. Now it's going to be hold, 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 dead. And I'm going to take it out. You're going to see that as I progress with different dogs. But you're going to see the very first time. I don't expect her to take this very well. We'll see. She could surprise me. So I'm going to get her attention. Surprise, sit. I'm going to put it in. Now, I'm not forcing it in. I'm seeing, I've had some dogs that take it right away. She doesn't want it. Hold. 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 Dead. Good girl, very good. The first time a dog ever does something, I let them know they're pretty good. They're good girl, good girl, good girl. Get them amped up and then calm them back down. But I can't go good girl, good girl, good girl every time because pretty soon it's gonna turn into a habit. And once it becomes a habit, then I back off on the praise. So if I give them praise all the time, they don't understand what, that when they do something new and it's, I give them more, you can only give them so much praise. So I gave her too much praise, now she's wound up. So I'll, I'll let her settle, and now I'll come in for another repetition with it. Hold, 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 good, hold, 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 dead, 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 good. I had to get out of that. It was going too long. 
And she, she held it, but if, if she had held it for probably close to 10 seconds and then she spits it out, wasted it. I wasted the opportunity to get a win. So as she holds it, holds it, holds it, I gotta go, this is only the second time. Get out of it with a win. So we got something out of it. Look how easily she takes it now. Hold, 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 dead, dead. Good girl, very good. If you got a dog that won't let it go, they're possessive, they won't let it go, I'll take their gums, I'll just pinch it up against the tooth. Just press it up against the tooth, and as soon as they open up, dead, good, good, and praise them for it. That's a perfect, that's it. I'm not doing any more with this little dog. Now over the process of the next weeks, we'll slowly add to it. I'm gonna put another dog up that's a couple weeks into it right now, and I'm gonna show you where we're at with that dog, because we've gone, it's not even my dog. It's a friend of mine who has started hold conditioning. I helped him out with it a little bit in the middle. He's continued on and I haven't seen the dog for a week or two. Now I'm gonna put that dog up on the table and see where we're at with hold with it. We'll have to probably adjust the height, make the adjustments, but we'll get that dog, we'll get him up on the table and we'll see where that dog is. Little Millie coming up next. Now, we talked about bringing in Millie. Millie is a dog that's actually in the process of hold. So I'm gonna get her up here. She doesn't belong to me. So I haven't seen her for a while. A friend of mine has been taking her through hold conditioning. So she's pretty comfortable. Now this is a new table for her, but she's been used to, I've seen he's been using the back of his truck, the tailgate of his truck. Um, he's got a setup at his house where he's got it, where he can tether her off. So we're gonna move her into this new spot. It's a very similar setup. It's just a new location. So I am gonna let her settle in a little bit. You can see her put lean on it. You can see her lean out, but she's real quick gonna figure out she can only lean so far. Now I think he's got her to the point right now where he's actually doing hold without the tether. I'm gonna start out with the tether. I have no problem in training backing up. Back up as far as you need to. Make sure you've got it and then start stepping forward. So she's been through this already, but not with me and not in this position and not in this location and not with this exact setup. So in order for her to have success, I'm willing to take steps backwards Make sure it's good, and then we'll take steps forward. And when you do that, I can do that throughout the entire training process. Be aware of that. Don't, it's not, there's no problem with doing it that way. Now the height for her is about the same. Spry, this, work, this peg worked out pretty well. I've got another dog I'm gonna be using. I'm gonna have to adjust the nail later. But you can see when she sits comfortably, I take a step back, she sits comfortably, she can't duck out of this right now. That tether's gonna make so that she can't duck out. Now, one of the things when I did work with her on hold conditioning, it was several weeks back and we did a, a workshop. We had her up on the back of the tailgate and when my friend brought her over, he said, I'm, I don't know, I'm kind of struggling. He got her to a point he'd been doing it for a couple weeks. And when I put this wooden dowel in, she took it acceptingly. She grabbed a hold of it, but her head was all over the place. She was ducking, she was moving. She just wouldn't give me her eyes. I talk about getting the dog's eyes a lot. She won't give them to me. So she's all over the place with that stick, but she's not dropping it. She's with this wooden dowel and she's not gonna drop it. And he told me, he said, I think I've got a lot of confidence in her. She won't spit it out. But man, she's just all over the place. Her attention and her focus was everywhere else. So I took her, put her on the table and I did it. And I said, well, she's all over the place. He said, I know, that's what I told you. So I took her down off the table and I put her on the ground. Now that comes later. I do the same thing that I'm doing on the table, off the table, and we're gonna show you that. But I put her down on the ground and I worked her around a little bit and I put her on hold and I recalled her to me and she brought it to me. It's another step we're gonna do later down the road. But what I did at that moment was I wanted to assess where is Millie in this hold? And she delivered it pretty well. So I said, well, I don't think there's a lot of problems here. I put her back up on the thing, on the tailgate, and I said, now I want you to focus on me, Millie. And I really thought it. I mean, this dog sensed it, I sensed it. I became pretty stern about it. I wasn't bullying her, but I was stern. She understood real quick, boy, he means business. So I adjusted her. She wanted to duck out, I said, uh, uh, uh. And I brought her head right solid, and I held it. And I got, I commanded her respect and her trust and her, and all of a sudden that dog was looking at me. And she held it, she looked right at me. And that when she did it, I was the underside of her chin. We're never gonna pet the dogs on the top of the head when they've got something in their mouth. Because what I'm doing is I'm encouraging, put your head down. You pet them here, their head goes down. In order for them to spit this out, if their head is back and they open their mouth, it can't fall out. 
If their head is down and they open their mouth, they drop it. I don't want to encourage something that I'm avoiding. So let me grab it again. Pet up, pet up, pet up. I don't need to be too, too touchy-feely with the dog either. Hold, hold. Watch that dog settle right in. Now she's bracing on me just slightly. See how tight she is here? I don't like that. I'm going to make sure she settles in because I don't want this to turn into, I'll just pull real hard and brace and I'll brace on his hand. That's not what I'm looking for. I'm looking for a dog to hold on their own accord. There's a nice position. A little bit of slack in that lead. Nice attention. When I hold this thing up, she goes, I'm ready. Now he's, so he went from that and then he went home and he's been texting me and saying, I, I'm getting her eyes a little bit. I'm getting her to quit. I'm, she's not so distracted. Her head's not moving so much. That's all steps towards this process. So I actually, I'm going to find out real quick where she's at. We might be ready to put this dog on the ground. We'll find out. Now we're still on the wooden dowel, which is step one, but that's all right. We'll get there. So I'm going to put her back up. I'm going to leave her up here. I want to get her positioning right so that she's not leaning out. So I'm going to scoot your back. Sit. Sit. She wants to be away from that a little bit. This actually probably could come down a little bit. Now, I may end up taking her off the tether. If she doesn't duck out, I might take her to off the tether here. But I'm going to see. Let's try this. Like I said, I'm not afraid to back up. I'm going to back up. I'm going to try this out. Sit. Hold. 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 See that head moving all over? Hold. Hold. Hold, 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 ah, 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 ah. hold, 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 dead, very nice. If you notice my tone changes. I'm talking to you and I'm talking to you like I would normally talk to anybody else. And she senses that. And as soon as I mean business and she starts moving the head around and I mean, no, 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 I need it right now. It's a simple change of tone. Hold. Sounds a lot different than hold, 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 hold. I'm not asking you, I'm telling you. She's got on, she can read right through me. She knows if I'm serious. She knows if I'm lighthearted. She, she reads me better than I can read her. So when I need something out of her, I don't have to get real hard on these little dogs, but I got to change my tone so they mean, they know. At my house, when my tone changes, the kids know something's up. And I get a lot of response out of very little change. It's just a little bit of a tone that'll change it. So let me get her again. Hold, 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 hold. Hold. I like the tail wagon. Hold. 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 Good. Hold. I don't like that head down. That head down, I'm anticipating a possible spit. I don't want it. Hold. Hold. Good. Hold. Hold. Hold, hold, dead, good. Now, back up, Re rewind that and watch that because you're gonna see a bunch of stuff where the dog head goes down, nope, it's not there, nope, it's not there. It wasn't bad, it wasn't awful, but I'm looking for, I'm looking for something real precise. When the head goes down, it tells me, no, nope, that's not what I want, so I adjust back up, I adjust back up, I adjust, and I ended up, I've got two fingers, one on each of the bottom jawline, and as I hold it up, 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 she ducks down. As soon as I d pull my hand off and she doesn't come down and I give her a little one of these and her chin, she feels me and I'm not even touching her. As soon as I got that internally, my little clock starts. Thousand one, thousand two, thousand, good. Get the heck out of there. So if you watch that again, there was two or three times where I think a lot of people would have went, boy, that's not bad. It didn't look bad but it wasn't exactly what I wanted. And as soon as I got what I wanted, I went one, two, three, good, dead. And you'll hear me a couple times I say good. When she does something I like, let her know. 
When she does something I don't like, I let her know. I think a lot of times we let them know when we don't like stuff way more often than when they're doing the right thing and we let them know that it's right. They got to understand. They got to make mistakes and we got to correct. But when they're doing it right, you got to let them know that's what you want. I think it's a 50-50 in the perfect world. 50% of correction and 50% of praise. So they can find that balance. I'm going to do one more with her. Hold. My goal right now, now the other thing to be careful is these gums. Don't let the gums get stuck between the dowel and the teeth. Hold. So roll the gums back. Hold. 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 There was it. There it was. Hold. 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 There it is. Hold. 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 Good. Hold. 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 Good. Good. Hold. Good. Hold. I missed it. Should have got out of it. Now I don't get out. Hold. Hold. Now we're back to this. Hold. 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 Dead. I had to get out. So I missed it one time. I missed it by a half second. And when you miss it, don't go after it. So I had to get back, reset, she fussed, reset, she fussed. She got a little better. My tone changed, my tone changed. My, we were kind of like, if we're on a pyramid here, down here it's not good. And as we got better, we started getting closer, getting closer. I got to the point and I missed it. We started back here. And then as you'll hear my tone, rewind these and watch these after I tell you about this because you're going to see all these little things. But you pick up on reading the dog. At one point, she almost looked like she was going to drop it. I got to be able to read that. Hold. Mean it. And as I know she's solid, hold. Hold. Good. Hold. See the body language on this dog? Just a little bit of tone. Ah, 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 ah. Hold. 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 No. Hold. There, I got serious. Making sure her gums are out. Hold. Good. Hold. Hold. Good. Dead. Very nice. Now, when I went like this, that's what I was looking for. So in my head, that's when the clock started. Funniest looking lab I've ever trained right here. We've got Hutch. Hutch is a German short-haired pointer. Now, Hutch is a very athletic dog. Very, he's got a lot of drive. He's got a lot of go. I'm going to put Hutch up on the table, and we're going to do the same thing. Now, again, Hutch is in the middle of hold conditioning. Get up. Get up. Hutch is in the middle of his hold conditioning. Again, he belongs to a friend of mine, same guy who owns Millie. And so what I'm going to do is it's been a while since I had Hutch under me as well, and I only hold conditioning him that one time at our workshop. So worked with him there. I think he's a little bit further along than Millie. Um, Hutch has got other personality traits that create some issues for us as a trainer. He's got a lot of go and he loses his focus pretty quick. Sound familiar? There's a lot of people that run into that. So foundation work is strong on lead. Off lead is what we're working on with him right now. So, but hold conditioning is going to be something that's going to help him with his, uh, when he gets a bumper, he likes to take a hot lap. He'll take a hot lap around the whole county block is what he does because he just moves so quickly. But let me get him up. Let me get him. I'm going to tether him again. Same thing. I've got two nails in here now in case I need to adjust the height. I'm going to put it into the first one and see what it looks like. 
I want to back up a little bit and let just have him settle in. Get him comfortable. He can't do these. The dogs can't do these if they're not in the right state of mind. They have to be in a good state of mind in order to be able to learn anything. So hold conditioning, I want them comfortable. That's not the worst right now. He's so tight on it right now, I'm gonna have to, he's going to have to settle before. So I'm going to let him figure out where he's at. Sometimes this takes a little time. He's got distractions. He hears Millie at a distance. He's a too low. If his nose is hitting the ground, he's too low. Let me move him up a little bit. I might even have to move it up a little bit more. I don't want the distraction of putting my nose down to the ground. The dog's got a great nose. He wants to use it. He's just got to settle in. So I'm not going to try to fire him up. I'm not going to get him all wound up. I'm not going to give him a lot of attention. He wants attention. If I'm quick to, no, no, be quiet, Hutch. Settle in. He's getting what he wants. As soon as I stop again, he'll do it again times, you know, multiplied. So I need him. This is, this is similar to the idea of when we tie dogs out in our foundation DVD. We need them to settle. They got to get settled. Ah, 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 ah. So the first part of hold conditioning right now with him is going to be no hold involved. We're just getting him to settle. He's antsy. He, to go into hold right now would be, we'd get nothing out of it. Now he's trying to lay down. He's trying to do anything to get out of this position. Make sure he can't pull this off. So I'm just going to take a step back. A lot of distractions. Do it. Sit. Let me sit. Do it. There's he's got a loose lead right now, which I like. Gotta get him comfortable. Good. Good. Now he's seen this before. I'm gonna roll the lips up. He doesn't want to take it, that's fine. Hold. Hold. Now he's another one that you struggle to get his eyes. Hold. Hold. He's much less fidgety. Hold than Millie was. Hold. 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 Like I said, I think he's further along right now. Hold. He's a little chompy. Hold. Hold. No. See how he wanted to spit? Hold. 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 Chin up. Hold. 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 Chin up. Hold. Good. Good. Hold. Dead. Very nice. You notice when I said good, it's when he made eye contact with me. He's looking around, he's looking around, and there's things he's looking at outside of the barn. And as soon as he made eye contact with me in good position, I let him know. Good. Uh -uh. So as soon as he settles back in like he is right now, we're going to get another repetition out of it. Roll the gums up, put in the dowel, roll the gums out of the way, hold. Hold. He's real settled right now. His whole body has changed. Hold. A little bit of time up here is getting him more comfortable. Hold. He's distracted. There's birds over there. Hold. I think it's a real good point, too. Obviously, breed doesn't matter. You can do this with any dog. Hold. I want to get his attention, though. Hold. 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 There. 
good. Hold. 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 Ah, ah, ah. It's real chompy today. Hold. 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 He almost spit it. Hold. 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 Dead. He's too quick to spit it. So I, I'm not in a hurry to get him off the table. Right now I don't feel good about it. I feel like he's very unsettled. So we need to get through this. Now this is why we're not going to show it in one day of what it looks like. This is a process. So I'm going to, I'm going to have him sit. Sit. I'd like to get a better repetition out of it for you guys. Hold. Here he's fighting me even a little bit. Hold. Hold. And one thing about Hutch is Hutch takes pressure quite well. He's not soft. Hold. Where some of these dogs I've been working with earlier are real soft, I'm physically going to get a little firmer with him. Hold. Hold, 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 this is better, hold, hold, good, hold, hold, good, good, hold, 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 see how I'm going in, hold, to touch it, hold, I'm going to remind him to hold as I reach like I normally would to take the bumper. I don't want you swinging your head, Hutch. You got to dial in with me here. Hold. 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 Good. Hold. Good. Dead. Finally got it. The last three seconds were good. So I got out of it. So it's going to take some time. He's... He's pretty comfortable. I think I'm going to show him on the ground because I think he, he has been doing it. I'm going to show him on the ground. But then what I'm going to do is bring in a couple of the older dogs that have been through this. Now the process goes like this. We start out with the wooden dowel up on the table. Then I move him to the ground. Then I move him around. I start adding things to it, getting little mini retrieves where I put a dog on sit and I call him to me. They deliver it. I, get, I replicate the hold upon the delivery. Then I go back to the table. And I might take a canvas bumper. I think he's been using a canvas bumper already. I'll go through this exact same thing with a canvas bumper. Table, floor, move around, heel with, recall, take the steps on the ground with canvas bumper. Then I'll go for my shed dogs, training dummy. Table, floor, heel, move around, move their feet. So I take these steps. I actually did this live, this process live with two twin sisters. Ah, ah, ah. This is a, something gets him going. He likes this a lot more than a wooden dowel. He associates it with the retrieve. I did this live on Facebook with two sisters, litter mates. One was a very, had a lot of go, a lot of grit, a lot of happy feet, and one was very calm. It's actually Ellie, the dog that I've been using. So two contrasting styles of dogs that genetically are made up the same way. And I walked through hold conditioning with them live through our social media. And I showed the differences. So there's no, you're not going to, you guys at home are going to have a little bit different situation with every dog you do. I do the same thing. But let me put this bumper in. See how he takes the bumper. Hold. Get the gums out of the way. Hold. 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 Much better. Hold. Hold. Hold, 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 dead, good, a little soft on his spit too, so we need, to, there's plenty of stuff for us to work on before we get going too far with his hold. I'm going to put him on the ground, I'm going to do a short recall with him, and then I'm going to bring in a couple older dogs on the ground and show you how I kind of finish that off. 
through the hold process. Again, it takes a while, guys. This is a process that takes a while. It has to happen, and it has to go from start to finish. Can't take breaks in the middle. Can't decide to stop. And when you're doing hold conditioning, there is no retrieving going on. Because every time you make a retrieve and they go back to the bad habit, you're starting back at square one. So we move from the barn to the, just outside of it. I'm actually got hutched down on the ground. I'm gonna change objects. I'm gonna go with the shed training dummy. I'm gonna put it in his mouth and this is where we transition what we've learned on the table to the ground now. He's got his feet now. He's got more confidence. He certainly can go wherever he wants. So the foundation work has to be there so we don't have dogs running off. But what I'm gonna be able to do is get his attention, hutch, hutch, hold, put it in to the mouth, just like we did the dummy, hold, the dowel, hold, hold, hold. And look at that little natural point, hold. Hutch, here, come on, hold. Get him, all right, let's start over. Bring him back here. Now, hold. That's a sign to me, we're not ready to be off the table. He, sh he can't spit that out. If he spits it out, we're right back onto the table. We're going through hold. And I don't know how much he's gone through with the training dummy. I'm gonna try it one more time just to see, but th he's not ready for it. It's clear, here, sit, sit, hold, 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 hold. I don't know that I'll even recall him, hold. I put a little distance in there, hold. Hold. Up underneath, hold. Good. Hold. Hold. Dead. You can see, he's just not ready for it. So what I want to do now, this is, if we come, if you come across this in your training where you just can see, he's going to spit it out, he's just not, he's not ready for it. So I go back to the table, and I might spend three, four, five days. You can do this twice a day. It takes about five minutes, five to ten minutes tops to get your repetitions in but you gotta be consistent with it daily and you might get two repetitions in a day, that's fine, but he probably needs a few days on the table yet with me confident that he's not gonna spit this bumper. He's just not, when he hits the ground, his focus is all over the place. So I'm gonna bring in Ellie. Ellie's been through hold conditioning. I'll have Taylor with me and I'll show you the next steps that I will do as the dogs become ready for it. So let's put Hutch up, we'll switch him out with Ellie and Taylor. So you, you saw us with Hutch, and Hutch struggled a little bit when he got on the ground here. Now I went and I've got Ellie. Now Ellie's been through hold conditioning before, so this should look pretty good. I've got Taylor behind me. She's been through hold conditioning, so this should look pretty good. What I'm going to do is I'm going to show you what I was trying to get with Hutch. I want to get those feet moving on the ground. I want to get them to be understanding that hold, they get it on the table. It's stationary. They're, they're, they're in a fixed position. Then I move them around on the table a little bit, move their feet a little bit but they still hold through it. Then I move them to the ground and I get their feet moving and they gotta move through it, but continue the habit of hold. So let me put it in Ellie. Hold, hold. Now I'll be much more lax with her because I know she knows how to do this. So first thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take a couple steps from her. Here, come on, Ellie, come on, come on. Very good, you can see the confidence in her. She just boils over, hold. Very good, hold did and she spits real nice she drops it out real nice heel that's it now again she's been through it don't expect your dogs to go to this right away it takes a long time ellie i didn't hold condition until she was about boy she was about a year and a half old just shy of a year and a half old so uh, a little over a year i guess hold she reaches out for it real nice she's going to hold it now the next thing i'm going to do is i'm going to add another step to it I'm gonna heel with her. I'm gonna put her in heel position. Now in order to do this, what does she need to do? She needs to know how to hold. She needs to heel off lead. She's gotta be under great control. So I need a lot of stuff here. This is a lot of layers that we've added on top of each other. So Ellie, heel. I can heel, I can turn. I get, I, if I think she's gonna spit the bumper, I'll remind her, hold, hold, hold. I'm more in a habit of saying hold, hold, hold than I need to when I get to this stage. You'll still see it out of habit. When I'm on retrieves with my dogs, they come close to me, they get close to me, I still remind them, hold, hold, good, hold. 
I can back up and I can recall her to me again. Ellie, here. Hold. Hold. Good. Hold. I can go in and pretend I'm going to take it. And remind her of hold. So even if I look like I'm going to take it. Hold. 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 I'm telling her hold. My, my body looks like I'm going to take it from her. But she's still holding because she's hearing that hold. 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 Dead. Good. So you got to mix it up and keep them honest. The hold conditioning is something that once we get through it, guys, it's going to pay huge dividends when it gets into the field with retrieving. I'm going to be able to accelerate when I get through hold conditioning into the field work like you wouldn't believe. It'll eliminate so many issues. If you try to skip hold and move on without it, I promise you, I've had it happen to me. It will haunt you and it will show up at the absolute worst times. So go start the hold, finish the hold, walk it all the way through the process and you will be so happy that you did. So hold conditioning start to finish. We're going to start on the table, wooden dowel, bumpers, antler dummies, progression, down, move their feet, get them down to the table, move them around, heal them and eventually we got this hold and a little retrieve. Come on, come on, come on, come on, come on, come on, come on. We take that mini, we make it a lot bigger, and now we've got dogs delivering to hand. That's what hold conditioning is gonna do, get you a nice delivery to hand. Now, I get her up, I put this away. I want her to get comfortable up there. This is where I use a steady tab. This is part of that three-piece lead. Just it's an extension, and we'll talk about that a little bit more later. But so this hooks to here. The height of this I've got set for her because I did it already. What I don't see how she just went like this and wanted to put her head down, and she can't get it to the ground. So now she's just got to get comfortable. It might take a couple days of just putting the dog up on a table and getting them comfortable. She's tethered off, she can't go anywhere. So this won't be real comfortable to start out. Most dogs don't like having something shoved into their mouth. So the reason I'm using a wooden dowel is because I've yet to train dogs to find wooden dowels. I don't need dogs to find wooden dowels and if they associate something negative with a wooden dowel, I'm okay with it. We'll get through that. What I don't want them associating negative stuff with is feathered bumpers or canvas bumpers or training dummies or hard antlers. We'll use these eventually, but not until they get comfortable with it. So when I put this in, now this dog the other day when we did it, she didn't really fight it that much. She took it pretty, pretty well. Um, I'm going to have, I'm going to do this real short with her because these little canines are still here. The other day when we did it, we did a couple of retrieves with her. Her gums started to bleed. I think I told you that. So at, she gets excited. She gets excited about this process of putting something in her mouth. All the more reason not to turn it negative. So when I put it in, hold. Hold, 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 dead, dead, good. Now I say dead, isn't it, you, you, do you say dead? What do you say? Drop, right? So that the, my dad was always drop. All, my, all, you, all my dad's buddies, all you guys are drop. I'm dead. So I don't care what it is. Whatever it is, be consistent. Just, you're going to have a release command and you're going to have a hold command. I say hold. And you're going to hear, you, how many times did I say hold there? I don't know, 10, 8 maybe times. Hold, 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 hold. Who's heard of Pavlov? Ring the, you know, back in science, where's my science teachers? Ring the bell, classic conditioning. Get dogs to drool by ringing bells. It had to do with the timing of when you rang the bell and it associated with the feeding and the food and the body's natural ability to create saliva. Does that sound right, Wyatt? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Just making sure. So uh, this is classic conditioning. By me saying hold, 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 got something in its mouth and it hears me saying it over and over again. It's very similar to my hunt commands. My hunt command is find it, find it, find it, find it, find it. Find it, find it, find it, find it, find it, find it, find it. She's twitching. This dog right here starts twitching. Watch her nose. There's a lot of things going on right now with her nose. And her nose really starts working when I say it. That's because I cue it with a verbal tone. So when I put this in, hold, 
hold, hold, hold, hold. I want to make sure I'm not pinching her gums. Hold, 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 dead. And I get out of it. As soon as I got a, as soon as I got a little bit of nice, I got out. Because good, dead. Hold, 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 dead. As soon as I got it. When she's all over the place, I'm not going to give her a dead and take it out. It's when she focuses and settles and gives me a little bit of focus. Now, Millie has been doing hold for how long, Wyatt? Since the workshop. Since the workshop. So about a month, five weeks? No, no four good. weeks. So I'm always going flat collar. I don't want this dog putting pressure on it and having any tension because it it's, it's not going to work. So I get the dog over here. I get my wooden dowel in place. Now you've gotten the wooden dowel. You're, have you gone to the ground at all yet with her? No. Just started going to the ground. So first things first, we're elevating it. And I'm just going to let her get comfortable. You can see she pulls and she goes, oh, wait a minute. Wait a minute. There's pressure. Wait a minute. Pressure. So she's just got to figure out her area here. High enough that they can't reach the nose to the table. Okay. Not high enough that it's constant pressure because that's numbing. She's got to be able to turn it off. So if she gets close enough to that, as she, she just went, she's pulling too hard. Yeah. She's going to teach herself where the distance is. I'm not associated with it right now. I probably could get away with one down for her. There. So... Pressure, pressure, pressure. I'm going to see if you swing over with Hutch because her attention is going to be not on me. And I don't want that. I want, I'm going to need her attention. She's not focused. No, just go back over there. Just, so, just out of sight. Sit. So see, see right there? See, there's the pressure. Now when she gets back to it, it. Like right now is the there. Right now, when she's antsy and kind of all over the place, that's the wrong time to go in to try to teach a dog to learn something. I can't get her to even sit still. So she's certainly not going to absorb this. So this might just, like I said, it might take a couple days of putting them on the table and just having them be comfortable. She's really worried about where dad went. So another thing would be, don't do it in front of 20 strangers while you're making tacos. <laughs> like, there's a lot of other places that you could do this. I like this right now, and Jeff, as you can see, it's when she settles in, it's not putting pressure on. So I'm going to wait one second. Now, this is, this is that sign of patience. Time, sometimes, sometimes the time is going to add up and you're not doing much. But if we rush into it, it's all for naught. Sit. Good. Now I'm going to go in with her. Hold. She has a tendency to really move her head. Hold. 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 Hold, 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 all over, hold, hold, hold. If they put their head down, they're much more likely to spit it out. So there's a reason why my hand is on the underside of the chin all the time, hold. Eventually I'd like to be able to pet her up a little bit, hold. Hold, 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 dead. 
I got a little bit out of her and I got the hell out of there. Now I'm gonna go to this side. Hold. Hold. Now you see this time she's kind of refusing it. Hold. 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 No. See, they gotta spit it out in order to understand they're supposed to hold it. Now she's denying it completely. Hold. 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 Dead. Good. Now that time, the reason I stopped was because she actually went like this. She was, she's outside, it started to rain a little more and she kind of got her attention focused slightly. And then she went like this and she held it and her eyes went like this and she looked at me and then she went back real calm. And that told me, there's a little bit of focus, get out. But she spit it out. I don't know if you guys could see it. She spit it out once there. Blatantly said, I, no, I'm going to spit it out. Come on, sit. Hold. 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 She's real tempted to spit. Hold. 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 But I'm moving on purpose. Hold. Hold. There's a reason I went for a chest, not for a chin. Hold. 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 There's a reason I came in with two hands like I always take it from her and said hold. Because that's the first time she's learned anything in this lesson. Hold. Hold. Good. Good. Hold. Dead. Good. That's the first le rep right there that we got anything out of. Because I went in twice and she went, and I said, hold, and she closed her mouth back up. I went in like I was going to take it, and she went, never mind, I'll keep it. So she went from, I, like I say, they got to make a mistake in order for them to understand what they're doing right. Little Spry didn't spit it out once. Is she hold conditioned? A lot of people would say, oh, she's good, let's go on. She's not. She doesn't understand a thing about it. She just happened to keep it in her mouth the whole time and not spit it out. But in order for her to get what this is, she's going to have to spit it out and me tell her, no, 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 that's not what I want. And then she's going to have to hold on to it and I'm going to say, good. And then she's going to have to want to spit it and I'm going to say, no. And then she's going to hold it and I'm going to say, good. And all of a sudden she's going to go, the good comes when I hold, the no comes when I spit. And pretty soon we do it enough times. Come here, sit. We do it enough times, it becomes, they're brainwashed. Hold. Habit is formed, hold. And it becomes, hold. 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 Don't put your head down. I'm talking to you. Hold. Best eyes I've gotten right there. Hold. 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 Ah, ah, ah. Hold. Hold. Right here. Right here. Very good. Hold. 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 This one's gone the longest. She's, ah, 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 ah. Hold. Hold. 
Tail is wagging. Hold. I'm going to go in and I'm going to test her. When I put two hands, hold. 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 Dead. There's two distinct different tones there. And when she hears dead, I don't mind her going like this. When she hears hold, I better not see this. I'm going to take her down off the table. Come on. Because we did this at my place too. And some dogs, I usually come off the table last. Come here. Sit. Sit. Now first off, we just start out with a little remote sit. We're going to work on that next. Hold. 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 See how she won't even take it? Hold. 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 Millie, here. Sit. Hold. 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 Dead. Good. Good. Come here. Sit. Hold. 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 Nearly. Come here. Come here. Sit. Hold. 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 Don't lean in on me like that. Hold. Hold. Dead. Good. Okay? I almost like her on the floor as much as I do her more on the table than on the table. Let's switch these two. Let me do Hutch up here on lead. I'm going to tether him and see how he does. Now Hutch is a little bit different character as well. Hold. And you can see his focus, this is the difference between these two dogs. He could care less about people, I think. He's just very independent. And he, he, he sees opportunity, I think, when he sees this. He's not so worried about where's, where's Wyatt, where's Millie. He's going, ooh, one of these again. Hold. Here's the chomping. Hold. Hold. I don't get the eyes with him nearly as much as I do with a lot of other dogs. Hold. 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 I'm a lot bolder with him. I feel like he's a lot. Ah, ah, ah. Don't chomp. Hold. Hold. I feel like he's a lot less likely to spit it. Hold. 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 Very good. Hold. Hold. Dead. Good. Nah. Sit. Sit. Hold. 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 Come on. Come on. Come here. Hold. Now I'm moving them a little bit. Sometimes moving them throws them off or they want to spit it up. Hold. 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 Good. Hold. Hold. Dead. Good. Sit. Sit. Hold. 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 And by the time I go to bumpers with dogs, or training dummies, or ah, 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 hold, 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 
hold. Good. Hold. 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 Come on. Hutch. Hutch. Hold. Hold. I'm never going to go and pet him on the top of the head. Hold. Dead. Because they have a tendency to put their head down and spit. Now you can see how much pressure he's putting on this. He really pushes a lot of pressure on it. Heel. Heel. Sit. Sit. Hold. 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 Come on. Hold. Hold. And he gets right back with no. 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 Hold. Now I had to get serious. He just spit it out blatantly and I really got on him and everything has changed about him in that second. Hold. 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 Good. Hold. Dead. Good. All right, let's switch him out. When you do hold conditioning, hold conditioning is a real personal thing with your dog. Like you really, you really get you go through a lot of stuff with them emotionally and you're really close to them and it's really hands-on. There's no, it's like, it's us. So I, if we're going to hold conditioning, we're just holding. We're just going to do hold. I'm not going to do it as a part of, we're going to talk about like a cyclical training where we come out and we do a burn off walk under control, but we walk real fast and we just, we walk instead of letting dogs come out and just run to, I've heard a lot of people say, well, I run them and let them burn off a little energy, and then I get into a session. The problem with that is you're wiring the dog to come out of the kennel and just blow off a bunch of steam with no focus. The problem with that is when you pull up to a field to hunt, and you want to hunt the dogs, and you want to be quiet because it's late season pheasants, and they're real spooky, and you let the dog out, you've conditioned the dog to come out of the kennel and just burn off a bunch of steam, go run a bunch of miles. The problem with it is, is it wrecks everything that way. You, what, you've done that to your dog. You trained your dog to do that. So we try to come out of a kennel under control. We do a heel, real controlled heel. It takes as much out of the dog physically and mentally to think about what they're doing and walk 50 yards as opposed to not caring about anything in the world and running five miles. It'll wear them out more thinking about, should I put my foot right here or right there? Do I need to go at this, this pace or that pace? Because they're, now they have to think about it. I've been, as ti I've been some, of the, some of the days I'm the most tired is when I don't do hardly anything physically, but I think a lot. Like, it wears you out. Same with these dogs. So I like to do cyclical things when I'm going to build, because I like to build off of lessons. Hold conditioning, I isolate. Because it really doesn't fit into anything else we're doing. But what I will do is bring them out of the kennel. I don't mind a little bit of a walk. To f I call it hooking in with them. I get my connection with them. I get my feel with them. I go. I, some of the best things we do is after we have a real good heel session, because all of a sudden we're really f we're kind of on the same wavelength. And then all of a sudden we get up and put them on the table, and now I can do, go through hold. And when I'm done with it, it's right back in the kennel to think about it. Like Millie picked something up the last three reps that we did. She's better after those three. She's better than when we started. Not by a lot, but a little bit. That's why this process takes a while. And we don't do any retrieving during it. Because if you do hold conditioning and you're 50% through it, but they're not 100%, and then you retrieve, and then they go pick it up and they spit it out, everything you did to that point is gone. Because the, it's not, it, you, can't, you have to go 100%. When you're done with hold condition, they never drop again. My dogs don't drop. If my dogs drop, I go, gosh, I got to go back to hold conditioning. That's why I'm not in a rush to get through it. Six weeks. I figure six weeks. If you start and you do it every day, and sometimes, you, I mean, you can do it twice a day, but it'll speed things up. But if you start, figure six weeks, and you'll probably be done in four. But don't hold me to four. Because some people will go, oh, you said it would be four weeks. I'm not done yet. 
So I say six because most people can get it in before six. But it takes a while. She doesn't just want to take it. But trust me, she's hold conditioned. Hold. 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 Now watch her eyes. Hold. She can't help but look at me. Come here. Come on. Come on. Hold. Why is she so unsteady up there? Because I got her lifted up. I got her feet up off the ground. That's why I do it in the first place, is to get, take their comfort level away from them and try to get better focus on me. Good. Good. Then we can get them down on the ground. Hold. 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 When we get into retrieving, hold. Now once they do start holding, I can go in and pretend I'm going to take it. Hold. Hold. Dead. Looked the exact same thing, but I kept her honest. Because as soon as you reach in, and it's every time you reach in you say dead, they go, here he comes. <laughs> What's the matter? Hold. Hold. Dead. I think she's got a little tickle in her throat. Come here. Come here, Ellie. Come here. So from the table, we go to the ground. Sit. Hold. You can see she's got a lot more life on the ground. She's ready to go. Ellie, here. So you can call her to you. Hold. Dead. That was a little retrieved. That I consider a retrieve. Two steps is a retrieve. I don't care how long it is. Hold. Here. Hold. Right here. Hold. Dead. But we didn't drop. We didn't blink. You got a little tickle in your throat. Come here. Now, the next thing I want to do with her, hold. Heal. Does this look familiar? Hold. Hold. Ah, 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 ah. Out of position. Ah, ah. Come on. Come on. So we can heal them around with hold. Hold, 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 dead. So we go from, I go from the, the dowel on the table to the dowel on the ground, to the dowel to recall, to the dowel to heal. Then I might go to the bumper. And I start out with the bumper on the table, to the bumper to the ground, to the bumper on heel, to the bumper on recall. I start, every object I do with my dogs, I do it. Training dummy. Hard horn. So I go through it. Now once you get through it with the dowel, the rest of them go pretty quick. I might go, it might take me three weeks to get from start to finish with a dowel, but it might take me two days to go from the table to the ground to the heel. Then I can do it in water. A lot of times dogs want to drop when they come out of the water. As soon as they shake, they spit it out. They don't want to shake with it in their mouth. It's hard to hold on to. So one of the problems that we have is dogs come out of the water, spit it, shake, then they pick it up and want to go. Well, when you've got a cripple and it goes out and picks it up and it hits the ground and it comes out and it drops the cripple because it wants to shake and the cripple hits the water, the chase is on again. I don't want that. My dogs come out, they hold until they deliver to hand. When they deliver to hand, they can shake. So some people like dogs to deliver to the front. Some people think it's really cool at ESPN. They swirl around on the side. It looks cool. I like it in the front. Because when they come to the side, you take the bumper out, what are they going to do? They're going to shake. Who's getting wet? Me. So what I do is have them deliver to the front, have my buddy stand next to me, let them shake there. Works out a lot better. So get them. I don't care how you do it. To me, it's not important. The style points don't count. It's how many birds I put in my bag. So when I get a dog to deliver and hold, that's that's fixes so many... If a dog is trained to hold condition and they run out and pick up a bumper, they can't run hot laps because they mentally can't allow themselves to do it because they go, I know what I have to do right now. What I have to do is I've got something in my mouth. I have to bring it back to dad. He'll go hold, hold, hold dead and take it out of my mouth. So you eliminate the idea of running off with something in your mouth. Now, setting yourself up early helps.